Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to your weekly dose of newsy infotainment. It's Let's Be Treasonable coming to you from the luxurious studios of Radio Titans in Los Angeles with your cognitive dissidents on the panel this week, comedian, artist, and host of the Nerd Goat podcast, Mr. Ed Greer. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured with all the setup, you were you were going to know I was talking about you before I got to your name. <laughs> oh, I didn't know if <laughs> we were supposed to talk like, yet. Yeah, no. Well, you know, do, doing the, hey, how you doing? Thanks for being here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> hey, how you doing, Ed? Thanks for being here. Oh, you said I was supposed to say that. Well, no, that's, I, I'm, it's <laughs> Not really more of a I'm sorry. Thing. Okay, okay. okay. Go, go Toss it to me again. That's fine. <laughs> no, we're, done. we're moving past that. <laughs> Comedian, artist, and host of the Nerd Goat Podcast, Mr. Ed Greer. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Thanks for Ed, having me. Thanks for being here. Also joining us on the panel this week, comedian, writer, actress, Trekker, Clee Wiggins. <laughs> Hello, Trekker. I'm glad you added that. I, you know, and, and I was careful not to Trekkie. I, I, I know <laughs> enough. Tre- I'm, I'm okay with both labels. All right. Well, you know, I don't want to be the guy that, oh, oh well, you know. And, of course, uh, as always, we are joined by a comedian, scholar, and the black voice of reason, Mr. Time and Ship. Uh, power to the people. Uh, good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder, wonderful to see you. I need a cool intro like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's... I. Not not to say that either of you are unreasonable. We've got an hour to figure that out. But, you know, just by, by virtue of primacy, he was here first. He got to choose Black Voice of Reason. Mm, no. We did have an angry brother on here at one time. <laughs> yeah. oh, that was Ted. Well, you know, and the, that's the thing, though. It's because uh, Ted lied. Brilliant guy. Yeah. Hilarious. Awesome comedian. Wonderful human being. I... Ted is not the kind of person that I would normally uh, refer to as an angry man or angry black man. Mm -hmm. It was by virtue of being on the show. And this is back when we had conservatives on the show, when we were doing the cause effect. Mm -hmm. So Ted would come in, you know, Saturday mornings, bright and cheery. Hey, how you doing? Drink coffee. And and by the end of the hour, he was ready to strangle people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which is one of the reasons he left, but he's, he's running his own show now learning not to swear with Ted Lyde. It's a great show. I've been a guest, uh, but it's, it's great. Uh, one-on-one interviews. Uh, highly recommend you check that out. Listener. Awesome. And yeah, you guys as well. And as always, we are also joined by our invisible panelists joining us via the miracle of recorded sound and telephony. It is five time Emmy nominee. Will Durst with this week's burst of Durst. Hey guys, Will Durst here with a few choice words about how the Democrats might want to postpone the celebrations. Yeah, sure, they've had encouraging results in a few special elections and some early midterm primaries, but they are not to be trusted. Donald Trump's approval rating could sink lower than the sewer hose on a submarine, and Democrats still couldn't stir the electorate with a crowbar the size of Idaho. Do not be deceived into thinking that reclaiming the House of Representatives this November is a Kevin Durant fast break slam dunk, because if anybody can blow a lead this late in the game, it's them. The kings of accidentally rolling over on the self-destruct button. No matter when, who, how, why, or where... They possess the uncanny ability to pluck defeat from the jaws of victory. Many ways of screwing up the midterms are within their grasp. And the following are not just the tip of the iceberg, but the crust on the nostrils of the dead elephant seal curled around the tip of the iceberg. How the Democrats could screw up the midterms. Lousy candidates. And don't forget, their bench is full of them. Horrible timing. These folks would wear a Yankees hat, the Fenway. The entire party pretending to be Republicans with a heart. Hillary Clinton writes another book. Barbara Streisand tries to help. Anthony Weiner gets an early release from prison. Two words. Bernie freaking Sanders. The Democrats' (laughs) insistence on eating their own. Does the term Al Franken have any meaning here? Nancy Pelosi talks for another eight hours straight, causing people to remember, hey, she's a Democrat, isn't she? And finally, an inability to stop worrying about the trivial stuff. No more internal fights over whether the newest presidential rebuke should be printed with green or blue ink. For Let's Be Treasonable, I'm Will Durst. 
Thank you very much, Will. I think he uh, he raises some valid points. And we were we were kind of talking about this um, before the show. Uh, we were we were enjoying uh, some lovely coffee beverages down at the Cafe Mermaid. Shout out to them. Uh, but we were talking about the intersection of the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And Clee, you raised uh, an interesting point about how uh, there were a lot of Jews involved in the civil rights movement in the 60s because they knew mm-hmm. we're next. Yeah. You know, after mm-hmm. after if the white man gets rid of the blacks, mm-hmm. they're coming after us. Mm-hmm. And I I fully agree with that. You know, it's, you know. Anybody it's, who can't see that is an idiot. Yeah, but <laughs> the problem is that uh, there are people who want to get mired in the argument that, oh, well, Jews never would have been around to help blacks if, if they didn't have their own self-interest in mind. And What else were they? Like, I, and I raised the point. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. Um, that, that, that's the number. You would want them to have self-interest. To, to, if, if your cause also benefits somebody else, even if, your cause, if the focus of your cause doesn't necessarily focus on that person, but they know if this cause fails, then the next step is the next group of marginalized people that's self-interest you need them to have that because that's their motivation nobody really um you know selfishness is a really great motivator <laughs> you know what i mean we, we are like, humans it's the, after why, all, yeah. it's the reason why everybody gets up and goes to work in the morning it's all because you don't want to not live comfortably you need money to live you so you need you need this i wish so. other people would understand that thank you Claire. I wish <laughs> <laughs> it's all like point. so there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with it being a self-motivating thing and not necessarily because your movement speaks to it. i mean it should be a little bit of, of that but they should like they should have that if somebody is i wouldn't trust anybody whose mm-hmm. motives were completely altruistic i'm like you're up to something right I don't believe uh, you. you're well, and especially in this town yeah. uh but <laughs> so so the question i guess comes up is where where is that line you know, before before getting into all lives matter, you know, mm-hmm. which I think we can all agree that. is bullshit. Uh, you know, I mean, yes, technically, yeah, all lives matter, but we're not talking about that. Mm-hmm. Um, there was just a case uh, earlier this week, a cop who shot uh, someone in Venice mm-hmm. uh, last year, uh, and the, the city decided, well, you know, we've investigated and we're just not going to press charges. Yeah. You know, and I, I posted on Facebook, you know, the important thing is that they went through the motions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, also- so but but I think there there is there is that like space in between, you know, um, saying that, you know, me too mm-hmm. as a movement isn't set up and the intent isn't to deny or negate the fact that, you know, uh, rape and assault and harassment happens to African Americans as well. Mm. Well, there's but, a great deal. You know, of there there are people who want to take it all the way. Oh well, all mm. lives matter, and it's like, no, you're missing the point. You know, cops aren't killing all lives with impunity. Yeah, <laughs> like they are. You know, black people. Well, I think a lot of that uh, comes down to you know, uh, there's a great book out about you know the history of segregation. <clears throat> And how a lot of things, I'm always one of those guys want to know, well, how did things end up you know, getting that way or who put it that way? How do we get to this point? And when you look at segregation, uh, redlining, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of people didn't know. I mean, why is there certain folks who were able to live in these neighborhoods? And it, because they were created. They mm-hmm. were put this way. When you put in Jim Crow laws to make sure that certain people, because at one time, you know, segregation was great for blacks because mm-hmm. guess what? They were doing well. They said, oh, you don't want us over here? No problem. We'll build our own. That's yeah. why we had Black Wall Street. That's why we were yeah. able to build our own city. But then you said, oh, wait a minute. They got it. They figured it out. We can't we, have that. We can't have that. No, <laughs> hell no. They got their own schools. They got their own banks. What? This is crazy. They can speak Latin. We can't speak Latin. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, they, black folks speaking Latin. And we had blacks in Congress. Mm-hmm. We had uh, the first female black millionaire who went out and created the her first own, millionaire the self-made millionaire yes ever. yes and so you had all these different things that were were coming about and and then we end up and and you know we could not we could not move forward 
Yeah. And it, and now we got to have what the Me Too movements. We got to have the, you know uh, um, was it uh, the the black uh, the black men, times you know, up and yeah all this stuff. We got to have all these different things. When and when I have you know my white friends will say to me, well man you know these people were complaining. I said you created this. Yeah. He said, what? Well, what do I said, yeah, you created this because you did not want to have a fair share. Mm -hmm. You did not want to allow people, you you kept, you know, uh, putting in these little laws and things that people had to go and dig for and find out, what? That was put there? Yeah, that was put there so you couldn't. So, oh, my credit is just as good as the white folks, but. You don't want to insure my mortgage, but you're going to insure his mortgage, mm. and then you wonder why well, their yeah, kids are going to school. And, you, uh, you know, you're in in that not you personally, right, right. but in that in that setup, your house is more likely to get burned down by racists. Right. So you know, of course, it's going to be harder to insure. Right, and do and so <laughs> and and that's why you saw white neighborhoods doing well, and mm -hmm. and you so we wouldn't even have all of this if you would have let things be what they should have been, mm -hmm. which were everybody. You know, fighting for the same thing. It should bother you when mm -hmm. Rodney King was brutally beaten. Yeah. If you're white, we sat in here for the Rodney King anniversary, and he asked the two white uh, the people there <laughs> about that, and it was. And I said, "See, Dave, that's the problem right there. Yeah. No one wanted to speak on race. No one wanted to say anything. No one wanted to deal. It's like that should have affected you. Mm -hmm. Here's a man. It should bother you. Here's a man it, brutally should, beaten you know, it, by thirteen cops." It took a white cat who was filming it. Mm -hmm. The only reason why they, they, they got caught. Other than that, it would have been, hey, they were just having a little good old time just beating the crap out of this guy. And like, what's, what, yeah. what the, the one thing that isn't ever talked about in that is like, <clears throat> that was back in the days when like, it was way more likely for a white boy to have a video camera. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that's true too. Yeah. <laughs> so like, right. his very privilege enabled right. that thing to happen and because was, he's chilling out with a fucking video camera. And he gave up the tape. He's like, yeah. hey, bro, that wasn't right. Luckily, he was one of those guys that said that was wrong. Mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, hey, and he's, his life was threatened behind that. Yeah. And, and so you got the I Me Too. I appreciate that white boy. That, yeah. We need to know his name. Too. Yeah. We know Rodney King. We know Reginald Diddy. We need to know the white boy with the tapes. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we need to be you something know. other than the white I'm boy with I the don't tapes. Know his name. But, but it. also, when we were talking about earlier about this whole self interest thing, to me, I just, all, when everybody, anybody argues self interest to me, I go, America didn't get involved in World War II until Pearl Harbor got blown up. <laughs> we had to literally, we, and I use the royal we because I know I'm not America. <laughs> but America as a, as, a, as a country had to get punched in their face. They were marching Polish people and Jews and gays and intellectuals. They were literally shipping them to death. Mm -hmm. Shipping them to their death. And we saw that for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And didn't do anything. And then some Hawaiian motherfuckers kicking it on a base, <laughs> get blown up. And all of a sudden, it's a big, hairy-ass deal. And we got to jump in the war. Right. You know what I mean? So self-interest, to, to, to malign self-interest, is it's idiotic. Mm -hmm. I, I, I refuse to engage in maligning self-interest. Self-interest motivates the planet. Mm -hmm. and I, I guess I got woke. Uh, uh, my quote is, I got woke about bitches. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Uh, I got woke about bitches because I started looking at women's plight as in 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 in, in, in relation to the black plight. You know what I'm saying? Every time we say, "Oh, these white boys just be trying to talk over me," and they be saying like, "All of a sudden, right?" Well, anyway, know, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when, when you come into like, and also like my so-called microaggressions when women first started saying like microaggressions, I was like, "Oh God, this is a PC bullshit." Blah 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 blah. But I noticed that when I come around, all of a sudden it's time to talk about batchet ball. Mm -hmm. When I come around, all of a sudden it's the best fried chicken restaurants that we're gonna talk about. Right. When I come around, the conversation shifts, and that I'm sorry, that is a microaggression. I'm not gonna go cry in it. I'm not gonna go try, try to find a safe space from it. Right. But if I feel as though you're steering the conversation because I'm around, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna I'm call you on it. I'm gonna talk about it. So like. Uh, noticing these things uh, to wrap up noticing these things women have been noticing these things for years and black people have been noticing these things for years mansplaining do you mansplain uh, yes, a little yes. bit yeah uh -huh. see but I, I think there's a problem you know when you, you get you mansplain mm, you yeah, all the time. fuck that noise <laughs> I love it I love well, it no, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I, I did see one thing hold on I did see one thing it said uh, there was a cartoon and I love this cartoonist but he said uh,